back everyone, and if you're new here, welcome. As you saw from that intro, today we're going to be making some epoxy coasters and some coaster holders. So if you have time and you want to watch me do it, stay around. Now for coasters, you don't really need a whole bunch of material, so we're going to take this rotten piece of walnut here, cut it up, and use the parts that we can. As you can see, as I was bringing this piece over to the bandsaw, it actually broke apart. This is actually a good thing, because I was going to do this on the bandsaw anyways. Now I'm just going to rip the bark off on the bandsaw and get a somewhat straight edge on this. Now the one surface was kind of rough, so I just took it over to the planer and then planed down the one face. Then I took it to the spindle sander and cleaned up that live edge. Before I drop this piece of wood into the mold, I'm just going to give it a quick sand over and I'm going to clean out the mold with some compressed air. I'm also going to clean the wood off with compressed air to make sure there's no particles or anything floating around in the epoxy when I pour. And I keep flipping the piece of wood around in the mold because I'm trying to see which way looks the best. Next thing I'm going to do is pour some epoxy. I'm going to pour a 2 to 1 ratio, put a little bit of this black powder in, and mix it up. There's a whole bunch of different ways to mix epoxy. Personally, I just use a little cutoff that I have laying around the shop, and I mix it by hand. I do this because when I'm done mixing, I just take the stick and I throw it out. There is attachments that go in drills, but personally, they're not my favorite. The attachments that go in drills, you have to clean them off every time, and I find that to be a pain. Maybe I'm just lazy. Now I made a little mistake here. I forgot to clamp down the wood. I also thought that it wouldn't be enough epoxy to make it float and I was wrong. Lesson learned. You can see in the next clip that I clamped it down and mixed up the design so that it cures in a way that I like. And then I'm going to pop all the bubbles using a blowtorch and wait for it to cure. Now if I did my math right I can get uh, 10 coasters out of that one pour. So when the epoxy is curing, I'm going to make two sets of coaster stands while we wait. And here I'm just grabbing the push stick that I dropped behind the saw. Now again, I'm trying to use all the cutoffs that I have in the shop so that I'm not wasting money. And these coaster stands are a great way to use up scraps. So I'm going to make these stands a 6x6 six six square and I'm just going to do that on the table saw here. I said this in the last video, but I'm going to say it again here. I'm actually at school right now, and I'm about four hours away from my hometown and my garage. I'm fortunate enough to be able to make it home on the weekends and work in the garage, and I'm always looking for new stuff to make. So if anyone has any ideas for stuff they want me to make, leave it in the comments below. Now that I've got this 6x6 square cut out, I'm just going to bring it over to the router table here and put a round over on it. The next thing I'm going to do is just mark out all the places that I have to drill to put my dowels in. Then I'm going to go over to my drill press and drill out the holes. Now instead of measuring each individual one of these dowels, I'm just going to mark a little spot on my chop saw fence. This makes it a lot easier to get more accurate measurements quicker. And the camera didn't get this, but here I'm just lining them all up to make sure they're all the same length. So there you have it, that's how I'm going to make these uh, little coaster stands. Now instead of showing you guys exactly how I make the next one, it's the same process, I'm just going to skip over it pretty quickly. I'm just going to grab another piece of scrap here, I'm going to cut it into a 6x6 square, but this time instead of putting a round over, I'm going to put a chamfer on it. So I'm going to change the bit from a round over to a chamfer bit on my router table, and then I'm just going to chamfer the bottom of this board. Now one thing that you should always remember to do when you're running a router table and you're changing bits is to unplug the machine when you're changing the bits. You uh, definitely don't want this thing starting up accidentally on you. And in my last video when I made all those live edge boards, I actually took this fence off. Instead of using the fence, I used the bearing on the router bit to do those live edge handles. 
Now I'm just gonna put the fence back on so that I can put the hose on it and not make as much of a mess. And just like the last stand, I'm going to use the combination square to mark it out and then I'm gonna bring it over the drill press and drill out the holes. Now another mistake I made was not clamping down this board. I went too fast with the drill bit and it started shaking around and making the holes bigger than what they should have been. As we can see in this close up, these holes are not very well drilled. As I said before, the drill bit rocked around and made the holes bigger than what they should have been so the dowels aren't going to fit in there properly. So I'm just going to go make another one really quick and save you guys the time of watching me do that again. This time I didn't clamp it down again, but I just went really really slow with the drill bit. The holes turned out fine, so it all worked in the end. Now it's been a couple days and our epoxy has fully cured. I'm going to run this board through the planer to get it flat on both sides and then I'm going to take it over to the bandsaw and resaw it down the middle. The blade that I have on the bandsaw right now is a really skinny one and it's meant for cutting tight corners and handles for the charcuterie boards. I'm going to take this blade off and put another one on that's meant for resawing. It's a lot thicker and it's a lot more aggressive. And I'm going to say this again, make sure you unplug your machinery when you're changing blades and stuff like that. You don't want them starting on you by accident and losing a finger or something. That would not be ideal. Now that everything is ready to go, I'm just going to make sure the fence is set up so that the blade is in the middle of this board. Then I'm going to resaw it down the middle and make two boards out of one. Next up, I'm just going to rip these coasters all down to their final width, which is 4 inches. Now I know it looks like my fingers are really close to the blade, but that's just because of the angle of the camera. My fingers are 4 inches away from the blade, so I felt safe without using a push stick here. Then I'm going to use my chop saw and square up one edge. As you can see here, I'm using my miter gauge, but you can also see the piece of wood clamped against the fence. This is because you never want to use a miter gauge and a fence together because the piece could bind against the fence and cause kickback. This stop allows me to get the width that I need, while also allowing the coasters that I cut to have space and not be pinched against the fence. And for these coasters, I'm just going to put a chamfer on the bottom edge. Now everyone's favorite part, sanding. I'm not going to waste any of your guys time, you don't need to watch me sand, I'm pretty sure you all know how this works. Next up is the finishing process. I decided to finish these coasters with tongue oil. I wanted to give it a little bit of waterproof protection and tongue oil is a pretty good finish for that. Now that our coasters are all finished up, we're going to finish up our coaster holders. I'm going to use a little bit of 5 minute epoxy to make sure the dowels stay in the holes. Last but not least, I'm going to give it its final sanding and then I'm going to finish it. Well there you go, that's how I make these epoxy coasters. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video, it really helps me out. And if you have an idea of anything you want me to make, leave a comment below.